Hi everybody. This is the second video for section 2.1 and today we're going to learn about something called a density curve. There's two goals today. First to understand and define the concept of a density curve and then to describe density curves by looking at their mean and their median. To start us off I have a nice dot plot here of temperatures maybe in a large city and you see they have this nice symmetric shape to them. Some small little juts here and there but I can see that symmetric bell-shaped shape to this distribution. But imagine if there were maybe 500 dots, or 1,000, or a million. Can you imagine how all those little juts would get filled out, hopefully? Sometimes in statistics, it's easier to think about a hypothetical perfect distribution than to worry about all those little juts. And that's the idea of a density curve. A density curve is really an idealized distribution where we can find percentiles and percentages. There's an example here in the next screen. What we have here are some test scores laid out for us in a histogram. The histogram has a nice symmetric shape, but thinking about that red hypothetical perfect curve to find percentages and percentiles will be easier for us than worrying about all the little individual bars in the histogram. It'll provide us some nice estimates. So a density curve is a curve which describes the overall pattern of a distribution rather than worrying about all little small things going on. There's a couple properties. First property is density curve is always above the horizontal axis. It will never venture into the negative y direction. And it has an area of one beneath it. And that's kind of big because that means that we can relate area to percentile now. Some other things here. The area under the curve above any interval provides the proportion excuse me, of intervals which fall in that interval. So we can talk about percentiles as area and percentages of observations as area. So for example, if I wanted to know the percentage of students who had a score of six or below, can you imagine how we would use that curve to do that? Well, all we need to do is find a score of six and shade in the area. Now finding that area takes technology. We'll use graphing calculators and different websites to do it. But that area, that dark shaded area, really is the percentile. The proportion of students who scored six or lower here is 0.293. And I use technology to find that. That would relate to the 30th percentile. Next, we want to talk about mean and median. We want to describe density curves by looking at their center. Well, if you think about median, median is the 50th percentile. It's the place in the distribution where 50% of the observations are below and 50% of the observations are above. So the median is really the equal areas point. So here's a nice bell-shaped distribution here. Where would the median lie? Well, if you think about the equal areas point, it's simply right here at 50. About 50% of the scores would be below 50, and about 50% above, the equal areas point. But how about this one? So the median is the equal areas point. And here it's a little bit trickier, and I'm not so concerned about getting an exact answer more than I am about identifying plausible places where the median could be. And again, I want that equal areas point. And here in this one, I'm just doing a rough estimate that the median is probably around 1.8, 1.7-ish. You look at that dark blue area, that seemed to be equal to the remaining white area. Maybe it's a little bit higher. But the essence of the idea is that I need to find the point where about 50% is below and 50% is above. Okay? So I'm going to go with about 1.8. How about mean? Where would the mean be? And this one's a little bit tougher to... Um, wrap your head around using the physical model, but the mean really is the balance point. So here's the idea. If that nice bell-shaped curve was made out of wood and I balanced it on my finger, where is the place on the x-axis where it would balance? What do you think the balance point would, would be? Well, here, the median is about 50, but so is the mean. If I were to put this on my finger, I could probably balance it right at 50 because it's got the same amount on both sides. In a symmetric distribution, it's okay to think of the mean and the median as equal. It might be off by just a little bit, depending on the symmetry and if there's any funkiness going on. But in symmetric distributions, the mean and the median tend to be about equal. Let's go back to our other one here. Where do you think the mean would be here? Well, let's think about this. We have a lot of the data kind of around 1 to 2, but I have some of these higher observations. And think about those higher observations. They would get added to the mix they're going to take the mean and pull it towards the higher values. So I don't know, again, where the mean actually is, but the mean will be pulled in the direction of the skew relative to where the median was. So if my median is about 1.8, the mean is higher than the median. I'm not so worried about where it is exactly, but I know it's going to be 
higher than the median. I'm just kind of guesstimating there. It's going to be around 2.9. Okay? But as long as you understand that the mean will be higher than the median, you're in good shape. Okay? So to summarize this, in a distribution that is skewed to the right, the mean will be greater than the median. If a distribution is skewed to the left, the mean will be less than the median. And if our distribution is symmetric, the mean will be approximately equal to the median. That's all we have about density curves. Take good notes. We'll be promised from the book next time.